Hey guys, thanks for joining me again today. Um, I miss you all so much and I hope you're doing well. I have three books about nature for us to read today. So I thought I'd sit outside and read them to you. The first book is called A Tree is Nice by Janice May Udry and illustrations by Mark Smont. Trees are very nice. They fill up the sky. They go beside the rivers and down the valleys. They live up on the hills. Trees make the woods. They make everything beautiful. Even if you have just one tree, it is nice too. A tree is nice because it has leaves. The leaves whisper in the breeze all summer long. In the fall, the leaves come down and we play in them. We walk in the leaves and roll in the leaves. We build playhouses out of leaves. Then we pile them up with our rakes and have a bonfire. A tree is nice because it has a trunk and limbs. We can climb the tree and see over all the yards. We can sit on a limb and think about things or play pirate ship up in the tree. If it is an apple tree, we can climb it to pick the apples. Cats get away from dogs by going up the tree. Birds build nests in the trees and live there. Sticks come off the trees too. We draw in the sand with the sticks. I know how much you guys love sticks. A tree is nice to hang a swing in or a basket of flowers. It is a good place to lean your hoe while you rest. A tree is nice because it makes shade. The cows lie down in the shade when it's hot. People have picnics there too and the baby takes his nap in his buggy in the shade. A tree is nice for a home to be near. The tree shades the house and keeps it cool. The tree holds off the wind and keeps the wind from blowing the roof off of the house sometimes. Maybe. A tree is nice to plant. You dig the biggest hole you can and put the little tree in. Then you pour in lots of water and then the dirt. You hang the shovel back in the garage every day for years and years you watch the little tree grow you say to people i planted that tree they wish they had one so they go home and plant a tree too the end i love coming out here and looking at the trees i hope you guys get to look at some trees today too all right, the next book that I have for you is How to Hide a Butterfly and Other Insects by Ruth Hellers. <clears throat> All right. 
The butterfly that you see here just folds its wings. to disappear. Can you find it? I can't find it. I haven't really looked yet. Mm. I don't know, maybe here? Maybe. This moth will do a different thing. It covers up each underwing so that all anyone can see is the bark upon a tree. Can you find it? I think. Right there. I can't find that one. <clears throat> the inchworm's feet are at both ends to move. It stretches and then it bends. Then it performs a magic trick and imitates a twig or a stick. Oh, this is another one where I don't know. That moth was the easiest one to find. We'll have to go back over this book again in school one day and see if we can find him. The praying mantis likes to make a sound just like a hissing snake. And it spreads its wings to scare a foe. It somehow always seems to know it won't be seen when dining where the leaves are green. I can find that one. Grasshoppers leap sometimes three feet and what you thought that you just saw now looks more like a bit of straw. This fly you see looks like a bee and thereby fools its enemy. But here's a clue I'll tell to you. Flies only have one pair of wings. Well, bees you see have two. That's pretty cool. Spiders are not insects, as I'm sure you know, but this spider is a hider and she's very, very slow to change herself to yellow and then to pink or white, depending on the flower that she decides is right, where she can wait to catch her prey and still be out of sight. Oh, there's one in yellow and in pink and in white. That's pretty cool. Because the world is hostile, all creatures need protection. They need to hide so thoroughly that they defy detection. So some of them use camouflage to fade away with ease from predators who like to die upon these predators. But predators must live, but predators to live must eat. So also fade and are discreet. 
and then their prey on which they sup can't see who's going to eat them up. Did you guys notice that this book rhymed? How cool is that? I liked this one. All right, the last one that I have for you today is If You Find a Rock. Well, this book is written by Peggy Christian and the photographs, because instead of illustrations, there are photographs, are by Barbara Hirsch Lember. If you find a rock, a nice, flat, rounded rock that sits just right in the crook of your finger, then you have a skipping rock. You toss it out in the water just so and see it trip across the surface, making a chain of spreading rings. Maybe you find a soft white rock, a rock that feels dusty in your fingers. Then you have a chalk rock and you use it to make pictures on the pavement. I know how much you guys love chalk rocks. Or you might find a big mossy rock by the side of a long, steep trail. Then you have a resting rock and you sit down. And as you sit down, you feel the cool moss squish beneath you. Then again, you might find a rock with a stripe running all the way around it trace the line with your finger. It must circle all the way down. You have a wishing rock and you whisper what you want before you throw it. I don't think I've ever found a rock like that. I have to keep my eyes open. If you find a rock, a big rock, by the edge of the water, then you have found a splashing rock. When it hits the surface, the water jumps out of the way, raining back down on your outstretched hands. The bigger the rock, the wetter you get. Maybe you find a pile of small rounded pebbles. Then you have found sifting rock and you can scoop up a handful and let them slide slowly through your fingers, like the rocks on our playground. Or you might find a rock whose water, water smooth surface catches your eye if it feels easy in your hand when you rub it, then you have found a worry rock. You rub it between your fingers and your troubles are smoothed away. Then again, you might find a rock sitting in a grassy field. Push it over. You have found a hiding rock and in the cool, dark underside live all kinds of things that creep and crawl and hide out of sight. If you find a rock, a great rock, that towers over you, then you have found a climbing rock. Hold on with your toes and fingers Grip as hard as you, grip hard as you stretch up and pull until you reach the top where you feel much grander than you did on the ground. Mm. 
maybe you will find a twisting line of rocks sticking up out of a creek. Then you have found crossing rocks, which wait to meet your feet as you pass over the water rushing away all around you. Sometimes it's hard to turn pages. <clears throat> or you might find a rock with a print of something else, a leaf or a shell. Then you have found a fossil rock and you feel the shape of something that lived long, long ago when the rock was young. How cool is that? Then again, you could find a small rounded rock right in front of your toe as you go down the sidewalk. You have found a walking rock and you kick it ahead of you and let it lead you home. If you find a rock, a rock that's not a skipping rock or a chalk rock or a resting rock or a wishing rock that's not a splashing rock or a sifting rock or a worry rock or a hiding rock that's not even a climbing rock or a fossil rock or a walking rock but you like it anyway because it reminds you of a place or a feeling or someone important then you have found a memory rock. And sometimes those are the best rocks of all. Take a walk, go see if you can find a rock that's cool. Look at some trees, see if you can find some butterflies that are hiding. Maybe wait until the weather's a little bit better, but it's also fun to go out in the rain. All right. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thanks so much. See you soon.